in the previous video we had quest we had a type of question where for example you would have something like 3x squared y to the 4 times by x2 over y we then highlighted certain parts for example would put all the x's together and then would put all the y's together and then we would do perhaps would do the numbers together okay the reason we could take the x's together is because they have the same bottom number we call that bottom number the base number and the reason we took the y's is because they have the same bottom number so now you have to keep that technique when doing examples such as in number one the most common error that I see is students will take this 4 and they'll take that 16 and they will multiply them together to give you 64 but please remember that that would be true if it was simply 4 times 16 but the, that 4 and that 16 now have exponents and so everything changes okay so we have to use the same technique that we used in the previous video and so technically you would have to go highlight all the fours because those are the bottom numbers okay but look there's only one four okay so that's not very useful you would then highlight all the 16s in which case there's only one and then you'd highlight all the 64s and there's only one and so technically well it, it would appear that we can't really do anything now at least in the previous video there was more than one x for example more than one y and so we could combine a few things but in this one there's there's none of the bases are the same but then here's what you have to do with these types of questions you have to take each of those bases the 4 the 16 and the 64 and you have to break them down as far as you can and then what you would see is that the 4 and the 16 and the 64 do share a few things in common so let me give you a quick rundown on how to break the numbers down and then I'll show you a fast way that you can do on the Casio calculators if you're using a Casio but I first want to explain what's actually happening so if you look at the number 64 for example I'm not going to start off with 4 because that's an easy one let's look at 64 I want you to think of any two numbers you can such that when you multiply them together you get 64 now there's various options you will get to the same end answer though but I'm going to start with 32 times 2 then what I want then what we do is we look at those numbers and we look which one will we look at which of those can be broken down even further and so I know that that 32 can be broken down into 16 times 2 it could also be 4 times 8 as I said you will get the same final answer Okay, so that 16 times 2 came from that 32, and so we shouldn't forget about this times 2 over here, which is over there. And so, in fact, I will highlight this times 2 and this times 2. We're then going to look at these three numbers and see which of those three can go down more. In this case, it's only the 16, which could be 8 times 2 or 4 times 4. I'm going to go with 4 times 4. And then we mustn't forget to put the 2 times 2 there. And then each of those 4s can also become 2 times 2, so that's 2 times 2. Then this 4 is also going to be 2 times 2. And then I'm going to put these 2 as they were. And now we are at a point where the numbers cannot be broken down any further. And so I'm going to simplify that as there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 2s, and so that's 2 to the power of 6. And so 64 is the same as 2 to the power of 6. Let me quickly look at the number 16, which is over here. And I'm going to show you how 64 and 16 are similar. So 16 is the same as 8 times 2. And 8 is the same as 4 times 2. And then I'm just going to put this times 2, which is already there. And then that 4 is the same as 2 times 2. And so 16 is actually the same as 2 to the power of 4. So look, there are a few things in common. 64 is 2 to the power of 6, and 16 is 2 to the power of 4. And so the reason we break each number down is to see their overlap, or to see where they are similar. Alright, now if you have a Casio, what you would do 
is, for example, if you wanted to break down the number 64, you would type in the 64 in your calculator. You would then say equals. You then say shift. And then towards the left hand side of the calculator, about four rows down, it's going to say, you're going to see in yellow, it's going to be written fact. You'll push that button. And the calculator will pop out the answer as 2 to the power of 6. Okay, so we're going to break the 4, the 16, and the 64 down. So let's get started. We're going to start off with this number 4 over here, where that is the same as 2 to the power of 2. What you now do is you put a bracket and you put the a minus 1, which was already there. Then we're going to do the 16, which is 2 to the power of 4, in a bracket, and then you just put the a plus 2. And then the number 64 we saw was 2 to the power of 6. Then in a bracket, you put a plus 1. Then, what does the exponent rule say for this type of situation? Do we add them, or do we multiply them? We multiply them. Another common mistake is learners forget to multiply it to both the a and the minus 1. Okay, so if we do that, we're going to end up with 2 to the power of 2a minus 2. For the next one, it's going to be 2 to the power of 4a plus 8. At the bottom, it will be 2 to the power of 6a plus 6. Now look what's happened. Look at the base numbers now. 2, 2, and 2. Now we can combine them like what we did in the previous video, where there were x's and y's. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So... What is the exponent rule? So remember in the previous video, whenever we had something like x2 next to a x3, you simply add the exponents. Okay, and that's what we're going to do at the top. And so if you add at the top there, you're going to get 2 to the power of 2a plus 4a is 6a, minus 2 plus 8 is plus 6. And then I'm just going to leave the 2 to the 6a plus 6 at the bottom. Ah, so we can see that the top and bottom is going to completely cancel. But let's say we didn't see that. Then we need to ask ourselves how or what the exponent rule tells us. So if we had x to the 4 over x to the 3, what would you do with these exponents? You would minus them, right? And that would give you x to the power of 1. Notice I don't cancel the x's because they are the same. So you're not going to cancel these 2's. But what you are going to do is you're going to say, so sorry, this, this part here is going to become 2 to the power of 6a plus 6 at the top. Then we've got a minus whatever's at the bottom. And so remember that minus is for the 6a and the 6. And so if you want, you can put it in a little bracket like that. That helps. And so that's going to give you 6a plus 6 minus 6a minus 6. That all cancels out. And so you end up with 2 to the power of 0. And anything to the power of 0 is 1. And so that whole answer is 1. Starting with number 2. Don't be tempted to say 6 times 3. I see it. I know it's a temptation. 6 times 3 is 18, right? But remember, 6 times 3, yes, it is 18. But because there's exponents involved, that doesn't work anymore. So what you've got to do is you've got to put all the bases that are the same together. But in this case, all three bases are different. There's a 6, there's a 3, and there's an 18. Whereas in the previous video, we had some nice things like x squared times x3 times y squared over y. And so these two could go together, see, because they x and x at the bottom, and then a y and a y, they went together. But here the base numbers are all different. So remember, this is where you convert them by using the shift fact button on the Casio calculators. And remember, whenever you change that base number, just put it in a bracket. So 6 on your calculator will give you 2 times 3. And then remember to put the exponents, n plus 3. 3 is already broken down, so that'll just stay 3 to the power of 1 plus n. 18 is the same as 2 times 3 squared. This will all come from your calculator to the power of n plus 2. Now... We have to remember that this 2 has an exponent of 1, and this 3 has an exponent of 1. And so how does the exponent rule work? You need to multiply the n plus 3 to the 2 and the 3's exponent. All right. And so that's going to give you 2 to the power of n plus 3 times by 3 to the power of n plus 3. 
times by this one, which is already there as 3 to the power of 1 plus n, over, remember this 2 at the bottom here has an exponent of 1, and so we're going to multiply this out, so that's going to be 2 to the power of n plus 2, 3 over here already has a 2, so that 2 is going to multiply out, so it's going to become 2n, remember that it goes to the 2 as well, so that will be plus 4. Now that we've dropped each of those numbers, we have some like bases. There's a 2, and there's another 2, there's a 3, there's a 3, and there's a 3. And so now we are in a good position, whereas in the beginning, the 6, 3, and 18 were all completely different. And so now you just stick to your exponent rules, so there's nothing at the top that joins that one, so we'll just leave it as n plus 3 for now. These two, the exponents will add, remember, because if you have x squared times by x3, that becomes x5, because you add. But remember, don't make it 3 times 3, which is 9. You keep it as 3, and then it just becomes n plus 3 plus 1 plus n, which is... 2n plus 4, can't really do anything at the bottom, remember we would never make this 2 times 3 which is 6, that is true of course, but if we've got exponents that, we, that are involved then you can't do that. And so that becomes 2 to the power of n plus 2 times 3 to the power of 2n plus 4. And so now we can put these two bases together, what should we do with the exponents when you're dividing like that? you have to minus the exponents. Please don't cancel out the 2's. It's very tempting to cancel this 2 and this 2 like that, but it's not correct because there are exponents involved. So instead you keep it as a 2 and then you minus the exponent. So it's n plus 3 minus, and then put that one in brackets, n plus 2, and then we do the same with the 3's, 2n plus 4 minus, it's always the top one minus the bottom one. And then if we simplify, that's going to give us 2 to the power of, the n's would cancel, that, then it's going to say 3 minus 2, and so that's just 2 to the power of 1. Here, you're going to get a complete cancelling out, and so you can end up with 3 to the power of 0, which is just 1, and so the final answer would be 2. Moving on to number 3, so now we come into contact with square roots for the first time in, these, in this um, video. And so we need to remember what the exponent rules say for square roots. So let's do a quick recap. So we know that if you were asked what x2 times x3 is, you would say x5 because you've just added. Then x2 to the power of 3 would become x6 because you multiplied. x3 over x2 would give you x because you minused. And so all that's left is to divide. And that's where square roots come in. And so if we have this, then this would become x to the power of 2 over 3. The way it works is it's always the inside number divided by the outside number. And so with this number 3, that square root a has got an exponent 1. And if there's nothing outside the square root, then it's an automatic 2. And so remember, it's always the inside number over the outside number. And so we have a to the half times by b to the power of 3 over 4. Because there's a 4 on the outside and a 3 on the inside. Now, what do we do here at the bottom? We've got some, we've got, I'm going to just expand that a bit. We've got a squared b3 to the power of 1 over 3. So what should we do with this number? Remember that number multiplies to each of these exponents. And so that's just going to become a to the power of 2 thirds. And you can do this in your calculator. The next one will be b to the power of 3 times a third, which is actually just 1. Now notice we've got like bases again. We've got a's and a's. And we've got b's and b's. And so we just stick to the exponent rules. We don't cancel out the a's or the b's. Remember that would work, but they are, but because there's exponents, that doesn't work anymore. So we have to say a to the power of a half minus two thirds, because remember when you're dividing, the exponents must subtract, times by b to the power of three fourths minus, sorry, minus 
1. And so this you can just go plug in on the calculator if you want. Many people say, shouldn't we get a common denominator and all of that? Teachers aren't really looking at that in grade 11. That was more for earlier grades. So you can just go plonk that on the calculator. And that's going to give you a to the power of negative 1 over 6 and b to the negative a quarter. Now, whenever you get to your final um, or to the final answer, double check and see if there's any negative exponents. If they are, then they have to go, if they are at the top already, then they have to go to the bottom. And if they are at the bottom, they need to go to the top. So both of these are at the top. So they're both going to end up at the bottom as 1 over 6 and b to the quarter. If there's nothing at the top to take the, the take those two, um, take their place, then what you're going to do is you're just going to replace it with a 1. And so that will be the final answer. You're welcome to rewrite this in square root form again, but it's not necessary. Teachers just want to check and see that you don't have any negative exponents. Moving on to number 4, which says 125 to the power of 2 thirds. Now, it doesn't really seem like there's much we can do there, but if we use the shift fact method with this, and this you just learn with practice. You you'll you'll as you practice this you will start to see how the sum works. So 125, if you use the shift fact method, is the same as 5 to the power of 3. So then I put it in a bracket and I write the exponent of 2 thirds on the outside. And so the exponent will say that we are going to have to multiply these, which gives you 5 to the power of 2, which is 25. Moving on to number 5, which I'm just going to rewrite at the top. There's not much we can do in the beginning, so we'll leave this one as it is and we'll leave this as it is. But we can rewrite this in a different way. Remember this x currently has an exponent of 1 and when you have a square root it's always the inside number divided by the outside number. And so that's going to give us x to the power of 1 over 4. Now we look across and we see if we have any like bases. Yes, we do. We've got x, x, and x. And so those three will go together. And so remember that this x over here has an exponent of 1. And so the rules of exponents says we must just add all of those exponents together. And so that's going to be x to the power of 3 over 4 plus 1 plus 1 over 4. And that's going to give you a 2. And then this 5 doesn't really have anything to go with, so it'll just be put in the front as 5x squared.